What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is going to be a complete history of 8D8, and we'll look at its droid series as a whole. One of the strangest manufacturers in the galaxy who produced an AI that blew past the debates of sentience and straight into sadism. But first, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Keeps. Guys, did you know that two-thirds of men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they reach 35? Keeps is the hair loss company to work with since they let you work with doctors from the comfort of your home. You'll chat with them online and they'll review your situation and make the right recommendations for you, with the product being shipped out every three months. And keep in mind that prevention is key! That all treatments like this take four to six months to take effect, so act as quickly as you can. Don't wait until it's too late. And they have generic versions of FDA-approved medications that make it a lot more affordable. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss today, go down to keeps.com slash metanerds or click on the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash metanerds. 8D8 is the most famous unit of a very popular line of the 8D series smelter droids, produced by the Roche Hive. It was a company run by the Verpine species out of the Roche asteroid field in Sector Q8 in the Mid-Rim. The Verpine were an insectoid, relatively peaceful, and highly technological society that, despite joining the Republic in its earliest years, sometime between 25,000 and 22,000 BBY, these bugs never really fit in with the galactic community, and remained an isolated hive to the point that many would never lay eyes on one, but almost everyone came in contact with Verpine products either through the droid business with the full name of the Roche Hive Mechanical Apparatus Design and Construction Activity for Those Who Need the Hive's Machine. A name that gives a nice look at how these odd beings' minds work and foreshadows some of the quirks of 88. And then there was the company Slane and Corporal that produced popular starships like the B-19 Torrent, T-6 Shuttle, Praxis Speeder, MG-100 Star Fortress, and further developed and mass-produced the Mon Cala prototyped B-Wing. Now their droid line included this Psyche, IX-6, J-9, and this 8D smelter. The J-9 was their first well-known product, but not for good reasons as it became a joke, something of a meme across the galaxy as everyone loved to make fun of this crash and burn failure of a protocol droid, as the Verpine did not appreciate how much other species would be unnerved by the bug-like appearance, the buzzing vocoder speech pattern, and their own programmer's poor understanding of Galactic Basic. As even the name confused consumers, not being a worker droid intended for labor, but was supposed to be a protocol droid like the 3PO series. Even worse is it developed its own odd and insulting terms, as the main buyer of protocol droids was nobility or wealthy merchants, and this droid kept referring to them as Royal Jelly. People were both confused and offended, and Verpine engineers were just as confused and distraught at this emergent behavior. The 8D series would develop a unique emergent behavior of its own, hitting peak sadism with 8D8 specifically, but keep in mind that most droid units do have quirks and this emergent phenomena, leading to those that argue that droids should be given full legal rights and considered sentient beings. Something fought for by both organics and units like L3. Congratulations, you're liberated. Scoot. I don't know. Free your brothers and sisters or something, just give me some space. Sure. Or groups like the droid Gotra that have fought to carve out an inorganic society after the Clone Wars, often committing acts of terrorism to do this. While legends say that IG-88 led a revolution to take the world Mechas 3 in order to build a droid army. Droids of all types have personalities that often develop out of their role and interaction with organics. And with many of them, it seems that their job of scrapping other droids and melting them down, without any affection or interaction with organics, this AI turns sadistic. Engineers speculate that this is because of a common trick in AI development. Since you have to deal with things like these emergent personalities, they try to tie joy or pleasure to the task that you want them to complete. So while most of these smelting units may just be operating the machines that turn raw ore into metal, many of them were also the droids used to break down other scrapped droids, separating them into their component parts, and then melting that back into metal slabs that could be sold in order to make new droids. It's a bit disturbing, but imagine if some superior alien race dumped unwanted human slaves into a big pit, and you were charged with separating bone, muscle, organs, and hair, 
those component parts, and then melting those into giant pools of ground bone and meat, and the off-unique parts like eyes that might be repurposed by the aliens in their labs to create new and better human slaves to serve their new needs. If you did that for long enough, and those aliens made your mind work so that carrying out this job was the one thing that brought you pleasure, it's easy to see how you would develop into something that looked like sadism from the outside. These 8D droids associating other droids' scream of pain with their own self-actualization, the joy of serving out the purpose that they were made for. And the droid torture victim is screaming for the exact same reasons, having a reaction like fear and pain when it knew it was about to be terminated and prevented from serving out its function. <laughs> And because it was designed to work in some of the most dangerous environments in the galaxy, being exposed to constant temperatures around 1,650 degrees centigrade, or 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt steel, the skin on this droid was to be made of a proprietary heat-resistant alloy called Duravlex, as well as having reinforced fireproof joints, giving it a melting point said to be over 4,000 degrees centigrade. The eyes or photoreceptors would see into the ultraviolet range, but focused on heat detection to ensure successful smelting. The brain or logic processor was located in the chest, while the power supply was up in the head, with a recharging port in the back. The skeleton was simple, but incredibly powerful so that it could move around large and heavy machines. The head design was another Verpine PR disaster, as it was designed to resemble the Mune species, which they hoped to be flattering for the Munes, who owned much of the galaxy's major manufacturing facilities. But rumors were spreading about this droid being evil, and also looked like one of the most hated species in the galaxy. The ones that used debt to crush people, manipulate economies, and fund both sides of wars. The galaxy was a very confusing place for these bug engineers, not very appreciative of this lowly worker droid made to look like them. It could have been another Verpine disaster, but luckily these units were very cheap, and over time many criminal elements liked to use these droids to carry out interrogations, leveraging their bad reputation for intimidation purposes, and secure in knowing that there was no chance at any sympathies developing or some sort of small droid rebellion being led by this unit. Cad Bane would use one to carry out the torture and extraction of info from C-3PO, hoping that Senator Amidala's personal droid would contain the blueprints for the Senate building. According to the Analyzer, he is not lying. As this bad reputation compounded, this became the go-to model for those in need of droid information extraction. A process that is not as simple as it sounds, as there are built-in responses to protect sensitive information, like we see with Cad Bane when he was using his software to search through C-3PO's hardware. But it's not just that it would have been quicker if he complied. Of course, in this case, 3PO couldn't because he didn't have the info. But even if he did, many droids programming have fail-safes against this kind of intrusion. In a world where droids are ubiquitous, the threat of people extracting sensitive info has been around as long as the Republic, nearly 30,000 years at this point. So AI engineers have long addressed this risk, and so any intruder ran the chance of activating some self-destruct failsafe, sometimes literally an explosion, or more often just a deletion of this sensitive info if the AI detected intrusion. It's odd to think about, but this is why it actually makes sense to torture a droid for info instead of just hacking in. This isn't exactly how the brain works, but work with me on this analogy. Imagine if we had some technology where I could carve out chunks of your brain to see what memory was stored there. I run the risk of permanently damaging it and losing it forever. Ideally, I would want to just be able to make you tell me. Unless, of course, the torture kills you, which is where interrogation droids come in. The EV series of droids are designated as supervisor droids, but as the Force would have it, this series was like the D8 in that it was one of the company's biggest accidents. Marin Data also made interrogator droids, which were specifically created to understand vast amounts of info on all known species, and deliver both physical and chemical torture methods, as well as monitor these effects in real time to ensure the victim was brought as close to death as possible without crossing over. For the EV series, a manufacturing issue installed a torture droid motivator along with the supervising protocols. These were sold to market and customers saw a boom in productivity, as the supervisors would push other droids in ways never seen before. Marin Data only realized the inclusion of torture droid programming after all the critical acclaim when they went to improve the line. Turns out a manager that operated like a torturer worked excellently. Supervising and taking a victim to the edge of breaking had a lot more in common than the programmers expected. So if you had the credits, and need, those like hut crime bosses, 
The pairing of an EV and 8D would make for the ultimate droid information extraction team. By pitting the victim's self-preservation protocols at odds with their commands to conceal info, EV-99 and 8D-8 would amplify each other's sadism as the years went by. Everyone on Tatooine, from farmers to smugglers, bounty hunters to mayors, all made use of some sort of personal droid. And this team in Jabba's dungeon were responsible for getting intel out that would be used to create bounty hunting contracts that would then be spread to the visitors above in Jabba's palace. Over the years, 8D8 came in contact with all sorts of units, and smarter droids like Astromex and Protocol droids that could tell he was of a much simpler design. So in their final moments, some would insult the dumb smelter. But also, the 8D knew it was more intelligent than most of your repair and power droids, further adding to its AI complexes getting pleasure out of torturing the elitist droids, and seeing itself superior to the lower class droids, as things like gonks admittedly did not have much intel to spill. Instead, there was a degree of joy that came from the act of torture itself, as it was now tied to serving its purpose. But this resentment towards the higher class droids also applied to his supposedly higher intelligence EV superior, whom 8D was said to have a secret hatred for, plotting to rise up in the palace when he got a chance. And it's unclear exactly how this went down, but this unit designed to resist blast furnaces would have won any direct fight they got into. But whatever happened, it resulted in EV-99 being sent out of the palace to be a supervisor of personnel in Shalman's spaceport cantina, with Bib Fortuna surviving the short civil war and 88 rising to a sort of new major domo. It would be five years before Boba killed Bib and took over, and we see that in this time he attained an encyclopedia level of knowledge on the workings of Tatooine either done just through the torture of droids, and or by using its intelligence to understand that if its job was to provide information, gathering it could extend to other means than just torture alone, or just torturing droids. Because in this major domo role, he was required to have knowledge of the complex political powers, names, and backgrounds of all the players, from all over Tatooine and beyond, evolving into a need to be the one presenting the visitors, accepting gifts, and even going further to provide advice. Their tortured squeals will send a piercing message to all potential challengers to your throne. Uh, respectfully, Lord Fat, on Tatooine, you must project strength if you are to be accepted as a daimyo. Though with the Nightwind Assassin, we see how he can be stuck in tradition, or perhaps be taking things like rumors and reputations a bit too literal. Their reputation is legendary. There is no way this one will talk. They're just people. In hoods. There is no way he will talk. They fear no man. And like how he could not refrain from providing intel to Fett, even when Fett said he was too busy for it, 88 just couldn't hold it in and keeps going on. You like this? Huh? Excuse me, Lord Fett. Not now, I'm busy. We heard back from the mayor's office. He remains completely unavailable for at least the next 20 days. Along with other quirks that came with working with organic emotion, which gives us a window into either his own personality or Bib Fortuna's. We're under the protection of the name that should not be spoken. You can say Jabba. I was concerned that you would feel insulted. Why would I feel insulted? Because you felt threatened. Well, now I am insulted. Apologies, Master Fett. And we see that he both directs guests on how to speak to the Master, but also gets personally offended when the Master is insulted. No one respects you. Enough! Showing how the directive of AIs to serve their masters, combined with being such a complex AI, does make for such unique personalities. Whether it was just supposed to translate, fix ships, or smelt. So that's it for the breakdown of 88. The droid that went from the lava hot furnaces, to the torture expert of a crime boss, to major domo of the galaxy's most feared bounty hunter and new daimyo. If you made it this far, the best way to help me out is to hit that like button, leave a comment, and share this video somewhere. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and check out the links down below for affiliate discounts on things like amazing metal print art, and free audiobooks from Audible. You'll also see our Patreon and PayPal. For just one dollar, your name will be on this list, and special shout out to our $25 tier supporters, Bill Payne, Brandon Robinson, and Oscar Jones. But most important of all, remember, at the end of the day, it's all emergent phenomena, and the Force will be with you. Always.